Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about the revelation of what happened with Yusil Tavares and his reversal of testimony in the grand jury. This is pretty big stuff. Let's just start with the substance. So Tavares, he's the IT guy down in Mar-a-Lago, and when Trump wants to delete the security footage, he dispatches Walt Nauta to find out, can that be done, et cetera. Tavares says, I don't think so, but definitely Tavares is part of those discussions. And he's called to the grand jury to testify. This is in D.C., and I'll explain why D.C. in a moment, but he lies. Uh, he said, oh, I don't know anything about any of those discussions, and he, uh, he commits perjury, and the government knows he commits perjury. How they know it exactly, we are not sure, but it's that already is an, is an important fact. We're in a part of the litigation where things are really precarious for all these witnesses because Jack Smith is sitting on a mountain of evidence, and when people lie, he may well know. So there, they say to him, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna charge you. We have you dead to rights on perjury," and they request in D.C. what's called a Garcia hearing, and that's to advise a witness of possible conflicts with his counsel. Okay, now counsel here, Stan Woodward, a name you're going to be hearing more of in the next few days, and someone who is on the hottest of hot seats. He is Trump's supplied lawyer for Tavares and also for Nalta and for a couple other witnesses as well. And once Tavares lies and doesn't give testimony that would inculpate Nalta, there's a rank conflict there. Uh, how can he represent vigorously both of them? The guy who has lied and is in and is in trouble for doing it, and who and for whom the truth would be uh, really uh, damning to his other client. So they hold this hearing, and at, at a Garcia hearing. Basically, you uh, the the judge advises the um, witness or defendant of potential conflicts, and the defendant had or witness has to basically waive the, any problem so that they can't down the line continue with this possibly conflicted lawyer and then claim ineffective assistance of counsel because of the conflict at the end of the day. So um, the chief judge of the D.C. Circuit, Jeb Boesberg, appoints a lawyer, a federal public defender, and uh, those guys are often pretty good. But anyway, just to advise Tavares, who does. And lo and behold, Tavares then step, says, I don't want Woodward as my lawyer anymore. I want this federal public defender. Goes back to the grand jury and gives it all up. And what does he give up? He gives up Nalta. He gives up De Oliveira. He gives up Trump. He gives up what we know to be the case. And he's a key witness, but not the only one. There's, uh, among other things, also videotape of some of the movement in and out. He says, yes, they were trying to destroy. They, they were asking me, how can we destroy the uh, security footage? And this, of course, just after, I think a day after, the government has said, we want, we're want we going to subpoena this and we want it. So a, a total uh, obstruction, which is what Nauta and De Oliveira and Trump uh, have been charged with in the superseding indictment. Okay, those, so those are the facts, and and just take a second. All these things now have to be filtered through what it's going to look like at trial, and this is Tavares who will get up there and say, yep, I first had the Trump lawyer, yep, I lied, and yep, I told the truth. And they'll try to cross-examine him and say maybe he's lying now because government put pressure on him, but good luck with that with all the facts. And by the way, uh, I've given you axiom number one before, Donald Trump can't testify. Axioms two and three in Mar-a-Lago, neither can Nauta, neither can De Oliveira. They would be completely decimated, It'd be a bloodbath. So they're not even going to be able to tell their side. They can try to vigorously cross-examine Tavares. We're talking about 
on the this new obstruction count. Devastating testimony. Of course, he's telling the truth. And of course, the Trump supplied lawyer kind of induced him or whatever. I don't, it's a whole different thing. Woodward, I'm sure, would say that he tried to represent him vigorously. We'll see if Woodward faces consequences, but that's all very secondary uh, for the, this this big stuff. So number one, two, three point is this is really killer, killer testimony when they go to trial. The other big point here is how this came up and the continuing drama with Judge Eileen Cannon in Mar-a-Lago. So the government filed a motion, I think it was under seal, to suggest that maybe um, Cannon needed to do this with Nalta once Nalta got charged. Remember, it was a superseding um, indictment, well, with De, De Oliveira. Uh, and anyway, they make this the, a similar submission to um, Cannon, and they do it discreetly, and they don't uh, dirty up Woodward or, or Nalta, and they, they file something under seal. And Cannon, both ignorantly and intemperately, says, what's going on here? You're doing a grand jury in another district? That seems improper to me. This is on her own, her own, uh, motion. And she orders the government to, to explain why this was okay. And, and also to, uh, you know, justify the Garcia hearing. And so you ask for it. Here you go. She leads with her chin, as does Woodward, as does Nalta, as does De Oliveira, as does the former president of the United States. They come in with this elegant, uh, very straightforward motion or, pa- or paper uh, yesterday. And they say, OK, you want to know? Here's what's here's what was going on with Tavares. And they uh, give the whole details that I've just provided. And they make 100 percent clear that those details, that there's nothing untoward here. On the contrary, you all the time can continue to use grand juries to investigate other crimes. What's the other crime that's being investigated? The obstruction, the actual um, superseded count, and that that was done in a different district and the D.C. grand jury is absolutely uh, impeccable. And she looks like uh, she looks pretty foolish, I would say. And if she somehow doubles down, oh, oh, and what does Woodward say on behalf of Nauta? This is stunning, really stunning. I don't understand what he's thinking. He says, you know what? Uh, the government's trying first to keep, he, he, um, uh, fans the flames that, uh, Cannon has begun. Terrible. They're doing another grand jury. And what you should do, judge, is suppress Tavares' testimony because it does conflict with Nalta's and it's that somehow, you know, um, that's the way to remove a potential conflict of counsel. That is bizarre and and just MAGA making attorneys get attorneys. Woodward needs uh, counsel and fast. He could really be winding up potentially with sanctions, uh, you know, uh, professional and maybe even uh, criminal exposure. But uh, the idea, oh, it's conflicting testimony and there's conflict in the lawyers. So just get rid of the testimony that that's, you know, a uh, ab- absolutely antithetical to what we're supposed to be doing here in the trial and getting at the at the truth. But that's what what he says. So this motion now comes in and says, you need a Garcia hearing, Judge Cannon. And by the way, nothing improper at all about this uh, other grand jury because we're investigating another crime, Tavares's um, perjury and also the obstruction. So the way it was set up is kind of exquisite. You know, they they didn't come in aggressively waving the the flag on this, but uh, because of her um, ag- aggressiveness out of the box, they you know very uh straightforwardly basically uh throw a, a shoot uh an arrow across the bow for both woodward and garcia and excuse me uh cannon who at this point it seems to me has to hold this um garcia hearing and has to back away from her uh 
suggestion, which she brought up on her own, that there was anything improper about this other grand jury. And if she doesn't, if she somehow tries to stay the course, and that's one of the things that happened with her back then, she gets embarrassed, egg on her face, and then tries to double down. If she does something like that, that really could be an occasion for getting her uh, recused and going up to the 11th Circuit. So killer testimony and uh, will be, I think, devastating to Nauta and de Oliveira and Trump because Trump is, as we know, uh, what Nauta says when he goes to Tavares, the boss wants it deleted. The boss wants it deleted. Uh, and a total um, uh, slapdown of the suggestion from Judge Cannon that the government did anything improper here. The table is set for um, a pretty um, uh, hot uh, hearing and a little bit of drama as to whether Cannon will see the writing on the wall. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, Please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.